In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Oh, uh, one second. A glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, Mighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord, <sighs> away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the newness of the nativity in the flesh of your only begotten Son may set us free, for ancient servitude holds us bound beneath the yoke of sin. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, the way we may be sure that we know Jesus is to keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. This is the way uh, we may know that we are in union with him. Whoever claims to abide in him ought to walk just as he walked. Beloved, I am writing no new commandment to you, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. And yet I do write a new commandment to you, which holds true in him and among you. For the darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light, yet hates his brother, is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother remains in the light, and there is nothing in him to cause a fall. Whoever hates his brother is in darkness. He walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. The word of the Lord. Let the heavens be glad and earth rejoice. Let the heavens be glad and earth rejoice. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Announce his salvation day by after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples his wondrous deeds. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. The Lord made the heavens, splendor and majesty go before him. Praise and grandeur are in his sanctuary. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. O 
Alleluia, Alleluia. A light of revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people Israel. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Uh, Just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the spirit into the temple when the parents brought the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him. He took him into his arms and blessed God saying, Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted and you yourself a sword will pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, with the new camera angle, I'm back at the pulpit now <laughs> and not just confined to that space behind, be, uh, behind the altar. Um, as we go through these, uh, these Christmas octave days, these special days following Christmas, um, we find uh, in, these, in these days further reflection on the mystery of the Incarnation. We see uh, that just as Easter cannot be celebrated for just a day or even for just a week, so we take extra time to unfold the mystery of the birth of Christ, the birth of Jesus. We take, we take this time and reflect on it more and more deeply. And that's reflected in the liturgies that are very much like the Sunday liturgy, just very much like the Christmas uh, liturgy. So we see uh, one theme coming through with regard to the birth of Jesus, and that is this change from darkness to light, that Jesus brings the light to us. And I suppose that was signified by the star that led the wise men to him. The, uh, this idea that he is bringing light into the world. And we can even see it in the seasons because what's happening from about Christmas Day, a few days before, uh, until now and continues is the days get longer and longer and longer. There's more and more light each day. So that's uh, one, of the, uh, one of the things that uh, we take with us is this increase in the light. My apologies to those who live in the Southern Hemisphere. So anyway, uh, it only really works for us up here, doesn't it? Um, We see um, uh, in the gospel today, again, this unfolding of this mystery of the birth of our Savior. And we hear in it that the parents of Jesus are good Jews and they bring him to the temple and uh, they perform the uh, ritual sacrifice uh, for him, uh, offering a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. They are good Jews. They are following the law 
of the Lord. And as they follow the Lord's law, we see in it blessings not just for them in the revelation of who Jesus is, but also in Simeon, this man uh, who had this opportunity, this opportunity to see the Lord's promise to him be fulfilled, that he would have the opportunity to see the Savior before he himself, Simeon, died. Now, this is a prayer that we use in the church, we use in the Liturgy of the Hours, uh, within, this, within this gospel, the Canticle of Simeon. And uh, I had to be careful in the way that I read it because, <laughs> unfortunately, what's in the, uh, in the breviary for night prayer is a little bit different from what's in here. Mostly it's the same, but it, the words can get you tripped up a little bit. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. So there is this, this idea that we take from Simeon as he, in a way, welcomes death and said, now I am ready to die. God has fulfilled his promises to me. So we, at the end of each day, as we enter into the darkness of night and prepare for sleep, we uh, take this time to turn ourselves again over to the Lord and say, Lord, let your, let your servant go in peace. Um, and we refer to ourselves in that. So uh, that's part of it. That's, that's part of uh, the revelation that we have, uh, that we are reminded of this daily for those of you who pray the Liturgy of the Hours. But we hear that the father and mother of Jesus were uh, amazed at what was being said. And so they themselves are coming to know more and more deeply who Jesus is as they hear this from other people, as they hear, in, in this case, Simeon. And then Simeon makes this great prophecy to Mary. This child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted and you yourself a sword will pierce. We see the fact that she will endure sorrows in her life as a result of Jesus and Jesus' actions. We, not because he's doing something bad, but because of what is going to happen to him as a result of the good that he does. So um, again, we, we are moving in this time after Christmas to unfold the mystery bit by bit, to deepen our understanding of it. And so let's take this time then as we prepare for Eucharist to uh, ask the Lord to help us to receive him more and more deeply, to understand more and more through the scriptures of, of who he is and how that impacted his parents. And also to, uh, again, to deepen our own uh, ability to receive the graces he wants us to have. Let's stand now and offer our prayers to the Lord. That leaders may stri strive to respect all within their communities, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who are ill, that they may receive uh, care, medicine, and support they need, uh, particularly uh, Evie and Nina or are in the hospital. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We offer the Mass today for uh, Susan Harrelson. We pray to the Lord. And we uh, continue special prayers for um, Simon and Sarah Hudson and their daughter Jane, for Chad Clements, for Dan Branch, uh, and Ted Jordan. We pray to the Lord. And we continue to pray for comfort and healing for Marie, Jane Benedetto, Barb Mee, Anthony Settle, Madison Placencia, Christine Williams, Karen Metcalf, Jimmy Dean Paris, Sandra and Gary Coggins, Sherry Riley, Jerry Brower, and Jean Marr. We pray to the Lord. Uh, any prayers you'd like to offer?
Lord, hear our prayer. Good and loving God, you gave us your Son to show us how to live. May we strive always to follow him and live as he did, so that our lives may forever give you glory. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so, with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Joan of Arc and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by the power of these holy mysteries, our life may be constantly sustained through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.